Imagine a world where there are no vegetables, no fruit, and no food. With recent declines in bee populations across the United States, this world could become very familiar very soon. Because of increased chemical use, colony collapse disorder, and global warming, over one-third of the hives in the United States were lost last year. In fact, according to Times Magazine, there are over 700 species of bees headed towards extinction. My name is Charles Ardema. I have been uh, beekeeping for about six years now. Um, actually, I refer to myself as a bee landlord because technically there's no such thing as a beekeeper. They kind of keep themselves. We smoke the area where you got stung because when she stings you. When she stings you, she releases something called the alarm pheromone. Charles is a beekeeper in Virginia, caring for eight hives year-round. His bees pollinate for Broad Fork Farm, a small-scale, all-natural operation. In return, he gets their sweet, naturally-made honey free of charge. Got the, the head, which you've got the the two compound eyes, that's the big eyes, and three simple eyes on the head. The center center section is what's called the thorax abdomen. Uh, two pairs of wings, and when they're flying, the the forewing and the hind wing are hooked together to give them uh, more lift. And we've got six legs, and the hind legs are where the where where the pollen sac is. That that's where the bee packs the pollen as she's going from flower to flower. Yep, all of these are the the worker bees who are all female. The male bee, technically called the drone, doesn't really do anything inside the hive other than eat the honey. And he's tended to by the female workers. In the past 30 years, bee clubs have appeared in almost every area of the United States. The purpose of these clubs is to connect beekeepers and create a unified offense against the many threats endangering honeybees. Well, just about every area has um, really multiple uh, bee clubs that they belong to. And generally that's a, um, a meeting once a month. To date, I belong to five clubs, and that's kind of a, maybe an accident, I don't know. They try to have a, a good speaker, uh, sometimes um, uh, someone uh, that uh, is flown in or drives in. I promise you won't fall asleep. Uh, I'm Frank Walker, a little about myself. Uh, I'm allergic to bees, so I care Frank Walker bees. is the director of the Virginia Master Beekeepers course, former president of the Virginia State Beekeepers Association, former president of the Tidewater Beekeepers Association, and current president of Norfolk Beekeepers. Um, we've already seen a country that uh, right now they have children that hand pollinate apples and pears. They lost a lot of their insects because of pesticides. So now children will go out and climb apple trees and pear trees and use a little pollen basket and a feather and they will hand pollinate fruits and vegetables. So. We've already seen that in the country. Could that happen here? Absolutely could happen here. One thing Frank studies as part of the Master Beekeeper course is colony collapse disorder, or CCD. 
Colony collapse disorder began as a few hives in California, seemingly vanishing overnight. The causes are unknown, but many suspect global warming, pesticides, and general stress on beehives to be culprits. To help fight back on behalf of honeybees, beekeepers like Frank and Charles recommend incorporating flowering plants into your yard, as lawn grass provides no benefit to the bees. Additionally, if you see a cluster of bees outside of a hive, call your local beekeeping association. A full list is located at beeculture.com. Here in Chesterfield, we have just come out of a very, very cold spell where it was below zero. So generally, I will inspect just uh, from the outside my hives, which I did today. And lo and behold, on almost all of the hives, there are bees that are coming out and flying. They're bringing their dead girlfriends out, dropping them on the front porch. But there's a lot of bees that are flying. I am a happy bee landlord. So the other thing I guess it has taught me is how, how fragile our environment is, number one, and how just a, a simple, little bug, if you will, and that's what they are, can, can make so much difference in the world. <laughs>